What's going on guys, this is your boy Everyday Tech and I was going to do an unboxing of the M1 iPad Air. But I may or may not have ruined that footage. Don't ask questions, don't worry about it, mind your business. So instead, I wanted to give you an impressions video to tell you how I've perceived and how I've used this in the last couple of days. I got this on March 18th and it is now currently the 21st. So I've had a little bit of the weekend to use it and trust me, I've used it a lot. And I do have some thoughts, especially comparing this to my older third gen iPad Air. So let's get into this. Let's start off with what's inside the device. First of all, if you're gonna get the Apple M1 chip, the same processor that is inside your MacBook Air in your iPad, you're also gonna get the eight core CPU, eight core graphics, Apple's Neuro Engine, and eight gigs of RAM. And I tell you that RAM goes a long way when you are doing artwork or video editing. The more RAM you have, the more layers I've noticed I could do in Procreate. So it's been helping me out a little bit. On the display side of things, you are going to get a 10.9 inch liquid retina display, 2360 by 1640 pixel resolution. That's 264 pixels per inch. A wide color display, that's P3. True tone display, 500 nits of brightness. And the screen also supports Apple's second gen Apple Pencil. In the box, you obviously get your iPad Air you get your 20 watt charger and USB-C to USB-C cable. Hey, anything's better than lightning? That was one of the main reasons I had to get away from my third gen iPad. Using a lightning cable in a household that uses nothing but USB-C feels much better. Now this tablet in itself is actually only a pound. I mean, obviously it's just a big screen, but that makes it super easy, super lightweight to carry around wherever you go. And that was one of the first things I noticed, but for me, it wasn't long lived as I do have somewhat of a hefty case on mine. But if you are one of those people that want to rock it without any case, you are going to get yourself an extremely thin, extremely light device. Um, I know some people have reported on hearing creaking noises. I've had no such thing. This feels just as well made as any other previous device. Of course, you have your Apple Pencil that can sit on top and constantly charge. You have Touch ID on the side which has been fantastic. Having a touch ID on the power button, it just makes sense. Alongside the screen differences, there's not really much. Now on the iPad Air, you do get yourself a bigger display and that's mainly because they no longer have that home button. On the Gen 3, yes, you have that home button. So it was only about a 10.2. Now I have a 10.9, chalk it up and call it 11 inch display diagonally, which gives me a little bit more room for my artwork and for media consumption. This also, brings up the fact that now you can utilize Apple's wonderful gesture navigation. I know some people are still accustomed to the home button, but once you get used to the gesture navigation, it's been honestly amazing. It's been seamless. I love gesture navigation over three button or physical navigation. That's just my preference. Not everyone's gonna feel the same, but we should. And in this weekend, I have noticed something. Thankfully, with this USB-C charger, I do get faster charging speeds. That was another concern I had coming from the Gen 3, is charging this bad boy took a long time. Yes, the Apple Lightning adapter is a slower transfer speed and slower charging. On the iPad Air, it's really fast. I haven't really noticed any issues. I really haven't felt like I was always waiting. Add to that, you get about nine hours battery life and I feel like I don't have to charge as often as I would have. Now, the differences between the iPad Air and the third gen are definitely, definitely going to be noticeable. But I've noticed something crazy with this bad boy. This is not far off from Apple's own iPad Pro. They both have the M1 chip. They both start at 11 inches. They both have, you know, the Gen 2 Apple Pencil, a lot of RAM. You have the same power. Now with the Pro, you are going to get the Thunderbolt adapter. So faster transfer speeds and you connect to more monitors. You are going to get the ability to utilize ProMotion, which gives you a 120 hertz screen. But speaking on that, one thing I've noticed with this iPad, even though it's stuck at 60 hertz, I don't know if it's iOS 15 or maybe it's the optimization through Apple software or just the power of the M1 chip, 60 hertz is blazingly smooth on this. The smoothest 60 hertz experience I have noticed, that's the best way to describe it, the smoothest 60 hertz I have noticed on a device on a cell phone, on a tablet, whatever you call it, smooth to 60 hertz. And I think Apple's software optimization has a lot to do with it, including the power that comes from the M1 chip. Now, another reason I did get this iPad is because 
I felt I never utilized the power from my third gen iPad Air. And I want to kind of get into the habit of using this as a productivity machine. And over the weekend, I did just that. I carried this around everywhere I went. I took notes. I wrote scripts. I doodled. I did my art. I haven't tested out LumaFusion yet, but I've played around with more heavy lifting apps, played some games. I've been trying to utilize this iPad the best way I can because I never took advantage of it. I kind of used my old iPad as a secondary device. I have been using this as my primary laptop for the weekend and I've been impressed. I really enjoyed it. For the basic usage, I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. And I guess it's because I do my video editing on my desktop that I don't think about using my laptop in that manner. So when it comes to browsing the web, watching videos, playing games, Google Stadia when I have great Wi-Fi, it's been a joy to use. I have no complaints. I am going to dive deeper into how I use it for productivity over time because I'm trying to find out more ways to make it enhance my life. But that's been my big thing, the biggest part that I've noticed this weekend. I feel like this product enhances my life and that's what I want out of my products. I use my Pixel because it's the most helpful phone I have. I use my Samsung watch because it's honestly just a very great watch and I don't always want to have my phone coming in and out of my pocket. I just want to quickly glance at notifications at the time. I use my laptop as my go-to for writing scripts, doing emails, work emails especially. And over this weekend, I have been switching that over to this iPad. And I'll tell you, it's been seamless. It's been exciting to use. It's a very well-made device as well. The build quality in this is beautiful, so I don't feel nervous carrying around. Now, I do have a case for it. I suggest you guys get a case for it, and it is just a glass slab on thin metal. Now, on the screen, you are going to notice it doesn't get as bright as, let's say, the iPad Pro. It doesn't have any mini-LED display technology in it. It doesn't have that, like, a 1,000 nits brightness. It's only capped at 500 nits. But in everyday usage, that's been more than enough. Apple was great at calibrating these screens to near perfection. And when you add in True Tone, it doesn't matter how the lighting situation changes, you're going to get the best visuals you can ask for. And that's been something I've noticed over the weekend. I've never once complained about the brightness or how the screen looks in certain lighting conditions. And how about that speed? Well, obviously this guy is a powerhouse. Utilizing Apple's M1 chip, I think the processor is 10 steps ahead of the software. My biggest dream is to see Apple utilize the power of the iPad Pro, especially since they don't have a touchscreen laptop option. I know you Apple guys always say who needs a touchscreen laptop, and you'll say that up until the day Apple releases a touchscreen laptop, then you'll change your mind. We know how the game goes. But utilizing the iPad as I would a laptop is wonderful. And the screen is beautiful, and it makes it super easy. When I'm watching Netflix, I've been watching Arcane. It's gorgeous. The colors, it's not that they pop in a super vibrant, like, kind of cartoonish way, but in a more realistic tone down, but still very easy on the eyes type of way. The build quality is fantastic. I've used it in and out of the case and all across the board, it feels amazing. It's very sleek with some nice rounded corners. I do wish the bezels were a little smaller, but that's probably my biggest complaint on this design. If you've had last gen's iPad Air, it's gonna feel very familiar to the point where you can use your previous case on this device. The dimensions are exactly the same. The camera is the same in a sense. It is slightly improved, especially the front facing camera where you do take advantage of that new center stage technology. I haven't had quite the time to test it out, but I've seen others use it and it seems pretty cool. I'm just waiting for some people to call me because I don't have any friends. So over this weekend, using this as my main productivity device, it gave me a couple of thoughts. For one, I am very curious to see what Apple plans on doing with iPad OS. I believe they're not going to move Mac OS to iPad, but we are going to see a more blending of the two, especially when you look at universal control. They want these devices to talk to each other very well. They're already taking the right steps. You see, now your laptop and your tablet run on the same processor, so they have the same power and capabilities. It's just the software separating them. And I think we're going to see a little bit more of Mac OS blended to iPad OS, but we're going to start seeing the lines blend a lot. And it's going to be great for us consumers and very profitable for Apple. That's my prediction. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. I say two to three years, we're going to start seeing way more integration. And I can't wait because just using this as a very lightweight productivity machine, keeping up with schedules and having my little uh, checkoff list for when I have things to do for the day, it works so well. And I think it can only get better. You know, Apple's really smart and given 
these devices much more power than they need, giving us a little bit of headroom so that when they do increase the software, it's not lagging behind. All in all, I am very happy with this tablet so far. I am very happy with the iPad, and even more so, I am very happy with the second gen pencil. So as of now, my impressions are incredibly positive, and I cannot wait to see how much more improvements this makes on my life. That's what I want out of my products. You don't have to be the best, but you have to make my life easier. And this product did, especially for a fraction of the cost of the iPad Pro. So that's my quick impression. I really hope you guys enjoy it. If you have any questions about the product, anything you want to know, especially in my full review, drop it down in the comments. I'm going to be sure to either answer there or save some of those answers for my full review, which will be coming in the next couple of weeks. So once again, always great to have you guys here listening to me talk. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.